Okay, hey everybody. Um, so I want to take a second and show you all our grazing chart. So during the winter, when things are a little bit slower, um, we take some time and really think about how we want to graze our animals uh, the next year, al always thinking ahead um, and about what our overall context is, what are our main goals. Um, so here at the ranch in our livestock department, um, our main goals are to raise super healthy animals that have a market with Grassroots Farmers Cooperative, um, to restore our natural environment, so really looking at ecosystem health. Another thing that we're really working on is to look at things like work-life balance and uh, employee health and employee satisfaction. So that plays in here too. So your grazing chart is not only just plotting out the moves for the animals, but you're really taking into consideration um, ecosystem health, um, the environment's health, uh, economic health, and then social aspects of it. You know, it really does help with the complexities of farming. Um, so when you're working with nature and you're working with the ecosystem, lots of things happen when you're working with livestock on the ecosystem, within an ecosystem, there's just so many moving parts, um, that you can't always control, but sitting down and planning ahead, knowing that your goal is to get that rest, which is vital, uh, for the health of the soil and for the forage, um, is really critical. So this grazing chart is planned on a 30 to 45 day rest. So we grazed pasture 20 on the cattle went into uh, pasture 20 on March the 26th. The sheep went in on the 27th. We're not going to come back to that for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, almost more than 30 days. So that's really important and it holds us accountable to give the soil and the pasture a rest. And with that rest, we're going to see a lot more soil health, soil biodiversity, more microbes in the soil, and we're already seeing it. Ideally, one way that you can make your, your grazing planning more efficient is to combine herds. So we've, you know, historically had some cows here and some cows here and the sheep are here. And what we're really, really trying to do is get everybody tight and bunched up and mobbed and moving together. During the, the flush of grass, when there's lots of, of forage for them to eat, um, have them go on it and move quickly. So just telling you that so you'll know we're using a leader follower system and the purple blocks are for cattle and the yellow blocks are for sheep. One thing we learned very early on is that uh, we've never put our sheep and our cattle together and our livestock guardian dogs were a huge hindrance. So they very much enjoyed chasing the steers around, um, which is counterproductive when you're trying to put weight on steers. So uh, what we then did is go back in and to try to rectify the situation because we moved so quickly and we, we didn't have long, a, a long time to fix this is to always put a buffer zone or one move buffer between the sheep and the cows. And also the social component in a grazing chart, like putting in the first thing here is my vacation. So knowing that I'm going to be out from this date to this date, and we want to make our work doable and so that it's not stressful. So where do we want to put the cows and the sheep while that I'm on vacation so it's easier? Uh, for the person that's here moving the animals. Other things that I put on the grazing chart, uh, thinking about the environment, whenever we have the nesting season for bobwhite quail, you know, I want that on the grazing chart so I don't go in with a gigantic tractor and rotary mower and, you know, disturb their, their, their habitat where they're nesting. The green marked out pastures, these are pastures that we can't go in and graze because during this time, because they're going to have cover crops planted, then they'll be germinating and growing. And then if you look at July here, we anticipate being able to put both the cattle and the sheep at high intensity and strip graze what we've cover cropped. Then I'll come back and do stockpile planting for winter. So anything that's marked out is not accessible to the animals because of certain reasons. So, you know, just looking at this chart, it looks a little bit overwhelming, but I can tell you that it adds almost a sense of calm to coming in, um, to, to know where your animals are gonna be. 
Also, plotting out this grazing chart doesn't mean you're locked in stone. This is a this is a guide, and you should do your first one and see how it goes and follow it and then amend it every year. For example, you don't start in the same place every year, so you're not going to just duplicate this year after year. This is, you know, test number one. How did it do? How did the pastures do? How, did the, how does the soil look? How do the animals look? How do the people feel? Okay, let's make some tweaks and do another one the next year. Um, so this is some of the things that we learned about in the holistic plain grazing class. Um, so through Savory's uh, planning processes, there are three planning processes that you learn about when you go through the Savory courses. Holistic plan grazing, holistic financial management, holistic land planning. So if you decide to go to one of the Savory hubs and take a course on holistic plan grazing, um, we'll teach you how to fill out this chart. It's actually super fun. Like I love working on the chart. Um, I was a little bit uh, intimidated at first, but now that we're working the chart and it provides so much ease and clarity, um, I really enjoy it. So, you know, things that you'll learn in the course are estimated the quality of your different paddocks. Uh, you'll obviously probably already know the size of each paddock. Um, you'll learn things like stocking rate and how many animal days per acre. So how much, how much food do you have on an, on an acre of land for your animals and be able to um, figure out how long they can stay in one spot. Um, I will say that our, our chart shows really quick moves. So especially during the growing season, when the grass is growing super fast, we want them on, we want them to eat, eat the forage and then move on. Um, when you get into the sort of slump, we call it the slump of growth or the, the slump season, um, when the, the pastures are super hot and the pastures are, are slowing down in growth, you slow down your moves. And that you can see over here, you see longer uh, periods of non-grazing when you get into the non-growth season. We've always tracked our moves before, but never in a way like this. I would love to be able to teach you all how to do this. So please, you know, consider taking a course either at Heifer Ranch in the future or one of the other um, savory hubs. I think it's a really, really valuable tool, um, a planning process that, that brings peace of mind and, and really holds you accountable to giving those pastures the needed rest that they deserve.